It's perfect. It is the best thing that Zuru has put out ever. This is the best. And it is going to be completely impossible for me to be entirely objective about this thing because I have always been a heavy gunner and this is like my dreams from back in 2018. This is the Zuru Ragefire and I found it at Walmart for $50. And apologies in advance because I do have a slight allergy today and I, I cannot breathe so I'm just gonna be like trying to remain in one piece but I doubt that that's going to actually happen. So far, yep, access has been granted. It comes with a tripod, and I don't mean like a stupid nuggety one, like the like the one that came with the Rhino Fire. I mean an actual like tripod tripod. We'll get back to that in a moment. And please cut this. Oh my gosh! Two four-sided Picatinny connectors. That is, that is really cool, which is, oh my, okay, well that's, that just came off. All right, what is going on here? Oh no, it's one of these. All right, this is gonna be a mess. There's a lot of twist ties here. It's been a few minutes of untwisting ties. Get out, get out. Yes, yes, go free. Freedom! All right, we'll get back to that in a bit. We got a scoop. You can actually see through this one. There. I have the box resting on my nose. Here we go. Ammo holder number one. There we go. Micromanaging. Ammo holder number two. And all 12 twisty ties can go with the box all the way over here where nobody cares. We've got, oh my, it's, it's so pretty. That's gonna be interesting to see what that does. It works with a wheel and... I like that, it's all one mechanism. Oh no, all right. The grip feels horrible. It's, it's, it's a good size, it's not too bad, but it feels really, really, really cheap. The foregrip though is just fine. I really like that and it's light, it's twisty, look at this. pretty good. Not bad at all, but yeah, the main grips are atrocious. Atrocious! And it takes six AA batteries, which I have graciously prepared here with not one, but two screws. I hate screws on battery covers. Why do people still do this? Make thumb screws for battery covers, please. Now we, we're putting all six Kirklands in at the same time. Also, this is a big battery work. It'll be easy to squeeze a light bow in there. And yes, I plan on modifying this at some point in the future because this thing is just, it's, it's beautiful. It's magnificent. It's everything I've lived for. But yeah, we got a rage fire and it looks really cool. The trigger mechanism is really cool. It's this thumb button. You push it in to rev. That's a real good rev up time. Holy crap. But yeah, you push it in a rev, you push it down to fire. And that's a really good rate of fire. Oh, I'm excited about this thing. Here are the new X shot darts. They look like elite darts, um, but they aren't elite darts in any capacity. These are far, far better than elite darts in every single way. And I can tell that just by looking at them because it's got a sort of flat, waffle style tip which is amazing also these these ammo holders are really cool these are really really cool um essentially these things are basically picatinny rails uh, well they're picatinny rail holders there's no way to actually attach them i don't think or maybe there is and i'm just being really stupid or that's what these are for i think that's what these are for so yeah you put that on it clicks, and then you put that on. <laughs> what the frick? Um, we'll get back to that later. And we'll probably emphasize on that in the review. For right now, we're just doing unboxing and first impressions. 
we got a chain. It's split into four segments and unfortunately is proprietary to this blaster. But considering the fact that Zuru loves to make chains modular, I highly doubt that it's going to stay proprietary for a very long time. And um, yeah, it is really easy to connect all these chains together. I think the hardest part of it is making sure that the uh, the top part is still has the hole going all the way through. But again, that's really easy. Also, let's take a look at the, uh, the tripod. How does this come out? There. We got it. There. <laughs> Freedom. And then this is a tripod. And it extends all the way out. And now... It's, it's really short. Like, my tripod is like three times as high. But this is perfect for sitting down. Now, look at this. That is... That is awesome. Even though it is like actually collapsing in on itself as we speak. This is a nightmare. Will it stay? Yes, we got it already. So now we're going to load this thing full of dirt. And we're going to see what the range fire can do. This thing looks incredible, by the way. I am really digging the appearance of this thing. The chain's a little bit annoying, though. Oh, I also forgot about the scope. Scope goes... Here, I guess? It, it does not want to... I guess that is just how the scope... I guess it's just gonna sit there like that. Alrighty. And then what do we do here? What do we do here? What the heck? Push it through. Push it through. There we go. And then... This is actually really hard to do. But, uh, here we go. Connect. The chain! There we go. Alrighty. And then if we lock it back in, now it doesn't turn. Firing at the window. That was really weird. <laughs> Hi. So, I have a question for y'all. What happens when you combine the general proportions and spinning barrel design of the Titan CS50, you know, the whole reason this blaster is appealing in the first place, the big intimidating symmetrical nature of the Rhino Fire, supposing you put the included drums in it, the rate of fire of the Hyper Fire, the sheer size and intimidation factor of the Mega Mastodon, and it's out of screen, but also the belt-fed mechanical system of the Vulcan EBF-25. You get this. made for me. So the Zuru Ragefire, this thing was a very big deal when it was conceived and like revealed to the public because not only is this the first flywheel blaster that Zuru has come out with, but they jumped all the way into the deep end and went for a chain fed fully automatic Gatling gun. Something that we have never even seen in the hobby before. The Titan does not count. That is a minigun. Minigun, tripod mounted Gatling gun. Two different things. I gotta say, I didn't really have any hopes for this thing because Zuru has always been that company that's just like been like quietly in second place and comfortably in second place all the time with their cheaper plastics and just overall weird darts that are really good but you can't use them in anything that has magazines in them or something. I wasn't expecting this to be very good. I was expecting something like the Titan CS50 where it's just a rapid strike reskin. Oh, they went above and beyond and put out what I can comfortably say is 
the best heavy gunner blaster I've ever used in my entire life, and that includes the Prometheus. I'm not just saying that because I'm biased towards the heavy gunner role, I'm saying this as a consumer who has used every single heavy gunner blaster that I think has ever been released by Hasbro, except maybe the Nemesis, if you consider that a heavy gunner blaster. I have used the Titan CS50, the Prometheus, the Rhino Fire. I consider the Hyperfire heavy gunner because of how big it is, the Mastodon, the Galar Horn, the, the Vulcan EBF-25. This tops every single one of them, and I'm going to explain why in this video. But first, we gotta start with the design. Now, right now I have the blaster minimized so that you can see the design of the actual blaster without the bias being in place of all the attachments, but I will go over the attachments later. But we gotta talk about how this blaster looks. It looks really, really good. It looks like a Gatling gun from the future, and I can say that in the best way possible because I have seen real-life Gatling guns. I know what they look like. I can say with a high degree of certainty, this is the most realistic Nerf Gatling gun I've ever seen in my life, especially with the big chain going coming off of it, and the fact that it's got like these two handles back here, the, the grills right here, the vent ports right here, the fact that it's got rings going around the actual barrel, and the big muzzle thing with the six barrels. Even though the six barrels don't line up with the four kind of barrel tube things right here that's just a really weird detail they did that with the crusher too but i forgot to bring it up but it doesn't really matter the big foregrip up here like it looks like a gatling gun it looks so cool and on that note not only does it look visually like a gatling gun it's big like a real gatling gun too if you guys have ever seen the titan cs50 you'll know that that blaster is absolutely gigantic look at this this blaster is the same size as the Titan CS50. It's literally the same size, but it looks like a realistic Gatling gun that just says X-Shot Insanity on both sides in different places. Sticker here? Sticker here. That's weird. I never noticed that until now. What the heck? I understand why though, the battery door is back here and they wanted to put the sticker somewhere else and I gotta say, thanks Zuru for still taking the time to put a sticker on the other side because you actually like to paint both sides of the blaster. This is a sin that Hasbro still commits to this day, even with the double punch, they still don't have the nerf logo on both sides or the double punch logo on both sides. Put detail on both sides, please! But now's probably a good time to talk about what does this blaster come with? It obviously comes with the blaster and the chain, but what else? It comes with a tripod that you can use sitting down. You can't really use it standing up very well because it's more meant to be just a sitting down tripod. It has this pin, which is already built into the blaster. To put the blaster on the tripod, you line it up and you stick the pin in. You can even do it like one-handed like this. Once it's in, it's pretty solid and it holds itself up pretty well. And then the blaster stops at this sort of flat angle right here. Though you have a pin right here which you can pull back in order to increase the angle of which you can tilt it to, which is pretty cool. It also includes a scope, which is weird, but actually kind of realistic. It includes two of these things, which are four-sided Picatinny rail adapters. They don't have Picatinny rails, but they slide onto Picatinny rails. And it includes two really weird dart wheel holders. They're all the way over there. I'll bring them up in a second, but it basically makes the, a big wheel of darts like you would see in a PDK film's thumbnail. And if you put all this stuff on it at the same time, it literally looks like something you'd see in a PDK film thumbnail. I mean, especially these things. I don't have darts on it right now, and I really don't feel like filling these up because there are a titanic pain in the ass to fill up and then remove later. But you get the point. Even like this, it looks like something you'd see in one of his videos. It looks like a clickbait thumbnail blaster, and that is exactly what they were going for. I feel like this is Zuru's personal attack on clickbait thumbnail blasters like that with all the excessive darts sticking out of them. They look like they shoot a million darts at once and a million darts per second, but they actually don't do that because they're all cosmetic. They said, alrighty, why don't we give you a whole bunch of Picatinny rails and a whole bunch of really goofy looking dart holders with a whole bunch of really goofy looking blasters and say, stick all of them together at the same time. Make the dumbest looking blaster you possibly can. One of the blasters in this line has an onion ring for a clip cylinder drum barrel thing. The other two blasters aren't as interesting. They have this like, like what looks like an eagle point reskin and then they have like a, a micro, a single shot pistol thing, which I don't know. I'm probably gonna get those as well just so I can stick as many things to this thing as possible and make it just like the dumbest thing on planet Earth. This blaster is so stupid. I love it so much. But that leads me on to the ergonomics, which is kind of like 
the worst part of this whole blaster. The foregrip is big. It's big and comfortable. You can get your whole hand on it. You can get all five fingers through it, which is good because the Crusher had this problem where you can only get like three fingers through it at once and then your pinky and thumb just kind of had to survive off of themselves. On this one, you can get the whole hand on it, even though the grip itself is kind of small. The main grips are the worst grips I've ever used in my entire life. Not because they're uncomfortable. I mean, the, the grips themselves are pretty comfortable, but they, like, they wobble. I'm holding it tightly. They wobble. They wobble a lot. It doesn't feel good at all. The good news, though, is that this whole orange piece right here is a separate component. You could possibly just take this off and replace it with a 3D printed part that would make it so much better, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing with it whenever I get the time and the, the money to do that. But for all intents and purposes, the, the main grip suck, which is really disappointing because pretty much everything else about this blaster is great, including the plastic quality, which really astonishes me. The plastic on this blaster feels solid. It feels like a Nerf product, which is insanity, not just a pun here, but it is insanity because Zuru has always made thinner plastics, really wobbly triggers, really wobbly grips. This one does not have a wobbly trigger or a wobbly grip. Well, the grip is wobbly, but the rest of the blaster feels solid. The barrel is made very well. The whole blaster feels very premium. It feels like something you would get out of an original N-Strike product. That's great. I hope that never changes. Also, one more interesting thing that you can do right here is that right now, the chain is connected tightly to the mechanism, but with this pin right here, if you pull it back, you can make it, like, move all by itself. They so can do that, which just sounds badass. It sounds like something you'd see in a movie. Or you can take the chain off or load it, just like scrolling it through while you load it, which is very helpful. And it also enables you to play with this blaster without actually indexing the chain, thus saving the battery life a little bit. That also leads me on to, how does this blaster work? Well, it's got a dual stage trigger right here, which is accessible from both sides if you're ambidextrous, or if you're holding it like this, which I am doing comfortably, and I'll explain why in a moment, but basically, you push the triggers in to rev and push them down to fire, and when you fire, it simultaneously rotates the chain and the barrel. <laughs> And I gotta say, the motion of doing that you would think would be like really weird and really janky, but it feels really good. And it feels really natural to do that. Now, I gotta talk about the elephant in the room here. I have been, for the majority of this video, holding the blaster comfortably with one hand. And I can toss it around and catch it with one hand and hold it with one hand and do this with it, with one hand, because the blaster has all of the weight right here, right in the back, which makes it super easy to swoosh. This is one of the biggest blasters in my collection, and I can whip it around corners and whip it back and like tilt it up and flip it around with no effort whatsoever. Trying to do the same thing with the Titan CS50 is a pain, and it like, it really fights against you because of how heavy this blaster is. This blaster is super heavy, a lot of weight at the front, a lot of weight at the back, this blaster uses AA batteries, which are lighter, and all of the weight is balanced right here between the foregrip and the main grip. So especially if you're using the foregrip effectively, all of the weight is right here in the middle. There is almost no weight at the front, and it just works phenomenally. They made this giant blaster one of the most comfortable and wieldable heavy gunner blasters ever, only right behind the hyperfire, and that's just because I count it as a heavy gunner blaster because of how fast it shoots. This blaster is amazing. I can't stop gushing about it. I've said this right at the beginning of the unboxing. There's no way I'm able to be completely objective about this because this thing is just so ridiculously cool. I need to get to the firing demo for heaven's sake. <laughs> It actually jammed. <laughs> so while the blaster occasionally jams due to the fact that the chain is just not made the best, I mean, it's a Zuru chain, it's not like the Vulcan chain where it was actually made super ridiculously good and designed to be like the highest quality possible. The dart fit is loose and sometimes the darts wiggle around, especially if you shake it around a lot. I had a lot of issues with jams during my testing process, but everything put aside, 
this thing is remarkably good. It is so good. Like, I have minimal complaints with something like this. Usually with big heavy gunner blasters like this, they screw something up. In this case, it was the grip being kind of wobbly. That is the worst thing I have to say about this blaster. Even the price is good. This is $50. $50 in comparison to the Titan CS50's $100 retail price and almost $400 retail price now. 50 bucks. And while I am obviously heavily bi heavily biased towards the heavy gunner position and big stupid ridiculous blasters like this, this thing did it so well that it outperforms every single other one in my collection, and I really want to quickly emphasize on why I like this better than the Prometheus. The Prometheus is more effective, especially if you're using it in a rival war, but the Prometheus doesn't offer the same emotional response this does with the combination of being this unreasonably stupidly fun. This thing puts out a pretty good rate of fire with full length darts with a modular chain, which means modular capacity. The one it includes with holds 40 darts and it still looks like a real life Gatling gun that was made 25 years into the future when everything is floating and we live in space. I love the rage fire so, so much. I love this blaster so much that I could make a 20 minute video gushing about how amazing it is. And that's exactly what I've done here. I have made a 20 minute video gushing about how amazing this blaster is. If you want to buy this blaster, I will link it in the description below. Please pick it up if you're in the market for heavy gunner blasters. This is the best one I've ever seen. Thanks for watching. Bye.